Well, well, the first thing to notice is that in terms of speaking styles, and this is universal, we found there are really no cultural differences here, that yeah. men talk in what we call direct terms. That is, they, we use shorter sentences than women, we get straight to the point, we have an opening and an ending, and in the middle of the sentence, you'll see hard data or facts, information. Uh, so we use direct talk, which sometimes means that as men, we can sound like we're being quite harsh or aggressive. Abrupt. Yeah. Uh, abrupt, yeah. That's, uh, so to avoid that, women universally talk in what's called indirect terms. Now, indirect terms means, I, I'm going to explain this from a man's standpoint now. Indirect terms means you're not really quite sure what the hell she means. Because we <laughs> don't want to offend anyone. And so we just coat it and we bring in different subjects and we don't want to come out and say, Make me an omelette. You or said that take the, the rubbish yeah. out. Take, take the, the rubbish out, out now. It's more like, oh, Alan, do you think you'd be able to take the rubbish out today? Because the rubbish guy, he'll actually be here at five o'clock in the morning. So it'd be really That's nice if you problem. could do it. So <laughs> yeah. indirectly, I'm saying it's your job to take the rubbish and it hasn't been taken yeah. out. So please do it. So he would be direct and he'd say yeah. the rubbish needs to be taken out. Whereas I would ask him in a roundabout way. Yeah, so the point of indirect talk, and we oh, yeah, it's so not we that are. men and women are better or worse than each other they're just different so if we understand the differences in the opposite sex then we can have strategies to handle it so alan doesn't mind the fact that i you know waffle and i'm indirect when he wants the bottom line he'll say bottom line, bar, bottom line. And, yeah. and then i give it to him um and if any uh, situation um, appears in our relationship, then we sit down and negotiate. So, for example, I'm a neat freak and Alan's not so tidy. So um, we sat down and I said, I can't live with you leaving things around. So let's come up with a strategy. And our strategy is that we've got a room in the house that I put Alan's stuff in. So when he's missing something, he just goes I to like that to leave room. my stuff in places in pieces so I can see it. I know what I have to do with it. But he knows that I don't like that and that I will, it'll stress me out. So I just pick it up. I don't care. And I put it in the room and then he'll say, oh, Bob, have you seen? And he goes, oh, yeah, I know where it is. And he'll go and get it. <laughs> so if she stayed at home and looked after the kids and he kept his career and it escalated and it became better and better and more highly paid, then it's a team effort. And she can still That's be at she home. takes my money. She can still be at home with the kids, but still furthering her education. And again, it comes back to don't be a victim. Don't give up everything that you're not Negotiate willing to give up. Yeah. Negotiate and have a plan for yourself because the kids are going to leave the nest. They're going to be going on and doing their own life. And we've got six you, of them. Yeah, we've got six. And if you uh, begrudge your husband because you've actually... Not even Catholic. Yeah. If you begrudge your husband, um, if you begrudge what your husband has achieved because you've decided to be the, the person at home or looking after the kids or, or taking a back seat to your career, that's a choice you've made. And... You know, you cannot blame him. You've got to be happy with your decisions. People were looking at all the negative things that were happening in the lockdown rather than having a look at the positives. Yeah. And the positives are, let's, if we're both working at home and we've got the kids being homeschooled, where are the rooms that we're going to put? Who's got an office? Who's going to do it in their bedroom? What time are we going to break so that we have yeah. everyone goes to work, everyone goes to school. There's a morning tea break where we sit and we play cards or we read a passage or, you know, we, we do something that's fun. Um, the kids could go outside and play basketball and then everyone goes back to their space. Yeah. And then um, when work was finished, work was finished because a lot of people found that they just kept working. So they never, ever, ever stopped. So their home life suffered, not only be, being together all the time and arguing, mm -hmm. but work became the priority and not their family. Whereas Could there's a lot of opportunities for them to go outside and just play with their dogs or their cats or... You know, just Could the work actually family. become their escape? Because you see that that word, guess, word escape actually pops up right, right away. And I was like, we are locked down and there's no escape. I cannot escape. It's like, and, and some people find escape uh, in their work. But again, that damages the family life. So yeah. we mm -hmm. said 
to to people they have to set times they have to set the boundaries of you know when you're working you're working when you're having fun you're having morning tea lunch afternoon tea that's when you're you need a plan you need a plan you need a strategy because otherwise people are always spoke we we kind of say jokingly oh it's groundhog day meaning that unless you do something different the day's going to be exactly the same